Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Oh, check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy, ECO. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I'm here with the official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, Madea. What's going on with you? Man, hey, man. Uh, a lot. You know what I'm saying? I, hey, man. I've been through so much. You know what I'm saying? Really? Boss Talk like 101 what? is a thing. You know, just just keeping the, you know, keeping the flavor. You know what I'm saying? Keeping the sauce, man. Hey, man. We got a special guest in here today, man. This sure guy, Diddy in the building. Listen, man. This dude don't really need an introduction because he be causing a lot of rough. You know hey, what I'm man. saying? You Dude, know what it I'm is, man. Tripping. Say, man, this guy here got the city on fire. People don't really like a lot of sometimes what he be mm. putting out. Some people agree, some people don't. Some people agree to disagree. The boy got this gatekeeper list. It's not only that. This is Big D, the mogul, man. Mogul Media CEO. You know it, man. A.K.A. Suge Diddy. A.K.A. Dear Heavenly Father. <laughs> A.K.A. The God of East Texas. You feel me? Because my daddy from Nacogdoches. <laughs> Yeah, that's your daddy, but not you. You know what I'm saying? I told Trill Talk. I said you the need father, to be son, up here. The Holy Spirit. That's my <laughs> daddy, me, and my son. <laughs> hey, Trill Talk. You know that, man. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, God of East Texas, in the Whoa, building. Oh man, this dude's so called bitch know shooting it. shots, man. You know what I'm saying, Smoothie P. <laughs> you welcome. I blessed you, my oh, brother, whoa, my son. Oh, whoa, <laughs> you know, man. God of East Texas. Who else out there? Whoa, now nah, you don't even know who out there. Last time I was there was only two horses. Oh, and two you crazy, people. man! I ain't gonna play with and you today. Trill Talk Say and Smoothie P, and then he moved here. Y'all moved here, so now it's only Trill Talk. Ah, oh, this dude here, man, he's swinging, ain't he? <laughs> man, East Texas, man, y'all hear him, man? Hey, Stand up, man! Texas. I want everybody to get in the comments because this nigga tripping right here. I love I want, East Texas. I want you to bust at you him. Say, hey, 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 hey! East Texas, a lot of talent. I'm from out of East Texas. You know, like, <laughs> like I said, my daddy from Nacogdoches. So you know, if it wasn't for him, my big mama hey, from Nacogdoches. Have you ever been to Nacogdoches? No. He don't Twice. know none of, uh, <laughs> If Twice. I would've known my daddy said, hey, I would've been there more often. <laughs> man, so how you been, man? Hey, man, I'm good, man. You know, bless and highly favored. White Jesus is moving. Oh, this dude, I can't do this, man. So, man, I, I gotta ask you about, I seen something, I don't know if it was real or fake, man. Mm -hmm. I seen Solo Lucci walk off the set, man, mm -hmm. to be yeah. honest with you. I didn't know if it was real or uh, I just want to talk about that for a He's second. Like, this ain't real. I said this, this ain't real, man. One hundred percent real. So what happened? So you know it's the end of the interview. Okay. Um, so by this time, you know my great interview. Y'all go check that out. My interview with Solo Lucci. Great interview. You know, but my Solo Lucci man, he do his thing. He had his Hennessy there. He, you know, getting his drink on. And you know, I brought up a you know my interview I did here with Charleston. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I was like, you know, I was trying to get another interview with Charleston, and Charleston was like, yeah, nigga, you don't believe in God. Say, say, yeah, nigga, I ain't doing no interview with no nigga, nigga, that don't believe in God, nigga, you too old to now know what you believe in. So, you know, I was telling them that story, <laughs> and then somehow we end up getting into this God talk, and you know what I'm saying? He said God is bigger than all of that, whatever all of that is, and I just said, I don't know. I just feel like in, in the world, it's, I said, I don't know. He said... Why not? I said, just too much confusion. A lot of killings has happened in the name of God. And so I don't know. And he said, nigga, you don't believe in God. Nigga, I'm out. I'm, I, I agree with Charleston White. Nigga, I'm out. And he grabbed the shit and dipped. I was surprised. I thought he was playing, so I'm laughing. He said, nigga, cut my mic off. Hey, uh, Walt Light Jordan, don't call me for no shit like this no more. Wow. I need wow. a shot. <laughs> he grabbed his Hennessy bottle He was out Hey it's, This shit happened. Man bro. I love Solo Lucci man His I, energy I bro you. Bro this I nigga came you. over here We had such a good time nigga That nigga That nigga yeah. did a whole concert his In his own hey. is Hey he was passionate On that drink Regardless He was passionate about his guy <laughs> Like that nigga was mad Like he walked out the room I'm like damn I, I can't get no picture What would Jesus do Ah oh, you <laughs> Yeah. Jesus did. But we took the picture. We was cool. You know, he came but back. You know, He's like, you're lucky because you have some people who actually ask that question before they do anything. Because I have friends who, even before they go to a doctor, before they go anywhere, they ask, okay, does this person believe in God? And if they don't, they won't go. Yeah, I think that's crazy. Well, uh, let me say this to you on, let me say this on air. And we're mm -hmm. not going to go too deep in because this is my show. Yeah, you got so it. We're not going to go. <laughs> <You got it. laughs> Look, but I don't think I'm going to say is, I'll say it like this. I'm the type of person. I meet everybody where they at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, 
put nobody in no box. You might feel a certain way right now. That doesn't mean you're going to feel a certain way later on. That go mm-hmm. for each person. That's fair. So I don't never, I don't ever count nobody out or tell nobody what they should do or what they shouldn't do as they go through their evolution. Mm. That's how I feel about it. Gotcha. And so that keeps me in a place where I'm able to communicate and deal with everybody where they're at. And that's, that's 100. That's, that's good. That's a, that just shows a lot of maturity for you and your faith. Cause I mean, Christians are taught to spread the word of Jesus. And if nobody listens to you, then you if the person you talk to don't listen to you, you shake the sandals off your, the sand off the sand off the sandals of your feet. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like, listen to me if you don't, then you're a bad person. Let me disregard you. And that's how Christians is like, I can tell you about Jesus all the time, but if I tell you, hey, I don't really subscribe to the Bible with Jesus, I become an evil person, a person without ethics, a person without morals, and you're taught to throw me aside. If you go look at my comments, it shows you, it, it, it gives you a good snapshot of what Christianity teaches people. Um, the the I mean, good for you walking out. He's evil, and when the devil says such and such and such, you run away. I'm like, this is, well, I, it's, it's, I'm just saying the theology that's yeah, being taught. That's the way that, that people that are are you got babes, you got people on different levels. Different you got, level. that's so, exactly so you can't thinking. really, just because people say certain things and just because comments come a certain way doesn't mean that depict what's the truth. I'll say that. You, that everybody's in their own situation on their own level and at the end of the day, if those are the people that attacked you or whatever, I can't say that I agree with what's going on with that. Mm. So I, I'm not going to even play that game. I still say that there's levels to this, you know, but they exactly. cuss when they say it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's cool. There's yeah. levels, man. I, like I said, I used to be one of those conservative and then evangelical, you no know, Christian type. So, I mean, I understand. That's why I kind of walk with that kind of that empathy because I understand. But, shoot, kind of walking away from it, I feel like the freest I've ever been in my life. I felt like I walked away from a cult. At, well, that's because of probably what you was into. I ain't gonna go there with you because cool. I mean, because at the end of the day, like I said, different groups of people do different things to influence different people in different ways. So there are so many different things going on in this yeah. world that you, whatever you've gotten into or whatever you sir came, uh, you know, came into contact with, we don't know if, what that is. That's true. I'm just saying, drinking I, the blood. I trip, I trip off of the fact of what you. Been through. Yeah, I'm just saying, drinking the blood of a man and eating the body of a dead man in the remembrance of him sound like witchcraft to me. Yeah, wow, I'm just be honest. wow, you, you see, <laughs> this dude is crazy, man. It just sound but like. I, I mean, if you think about it, bro, he, we always as Christians talk about some witchcraft, man. But at the end of the so, day, so, but are they actually? Drinking the it's in remembrance. You don't play the game. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, but the way I'm how he's saying, saying it, it's not that. But we always talk about initiations or ceremonies, these things. I'm just saying, when you look at it, when you at church, and it, then it warns you, like, if you ain't right with God, don't eat this, because people who didn't eat this or drink this and they hard went right with God got sick and died. You'd be like, wait, what? Well, wait a minute. All, all I say uh-huh. is, first of all, I don't even. I don't subscribe to the church being a building, so I wouldn't even been there eating the blood with you. So you never Whatever. took communion? I never I never done none of that. None of the crackers and the little juice? I, if I did it, I was it wasn't. Fat. I always tried to get extra crack crackers. <laughs> just do something else. <laughs> but a lot of tradition does a lot of things. I just say yeah, that. Sure. And you just, it's just caught on where people are at, bro. That's cool. So, but you know, you, man, you be interviewing everybody, bro. I love, I, I'm going to be honest with you. We was, we had destined to catch, uh, we was on his heels. I was looking at my, my thing, right? I was looking at my subscribers because, you know, everything organic where we at over here. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying, man? I got a chance, an opportunity. I'm for the catch this boy, man. Mogul Media is, he's there and I'm here. And all of a sudden you just went, Bam. And you took off, my dude. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I mean, I know what interview it was too. But yeah, it was a couple I, of them actually. How, but. Did, how did you? How did you come up with the move to you know to to, to move away from uh, my numbers like you did? <laughs> you know what, man? I kind of did the Daniel fast, man, and I said, God, just <laughs> see what. I mean? <laughs> order my steps and you know the Lord showed up and showed out you know how you do white wow, Jesus always man, never let me down crazy man so, no but for sure like um, on, on seriousness like no I mean I, I had a cool team that you know I had thought I had together and we, you know that kind of fell apart and um, we brainstormed and it was some some people that I really you know King Von brother and sister that was able to we, we been Dope. wanting to push for a minute um, and so you know the assistant that I had at the time did a great job getting them. 
And um, shoot, man, we did that interview. And you hope, because you you know you don't you know. know you don't know, because a See lot of times you you sit down, we do these interviews, you be like, oh, this one gonna go crazy, and then you drop it, and it don't go the way that you think. Then you get that interview you drop sometimes that you don't think do nothing, or it's not gonna do that much, and it's gonna go crazy. And this one I didn't want to get too excited because I didn't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I felt like okay, people gonna watch it, they gonna tune in, but that, that boy went crazy. Eh? How many views did you get? Like they went four crazy. million. He went crazy. How quickly? Something like that. A week. That's how he got away from. Is us. that your highest viewing um, content since you started? Mm. That that went that quick. Yes. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, because when I did Mama Duck, that one went off too for me. But when not I as went, quick. Went, no, just when I went to Chicago. The first time, I want to say I would maybe was at like 12,000 subscribers. And she the one that kind of, that interview kind of helped me go from that 12K to that 20K range, up mm-hmm. in the 20K. And then that King Von and I did Mama Duck again. Mm-hmm. Both of them did crazy numbers. So just combined, you know what I'm saying, that helped me get, you know, I think it jumped. I think I did about 15,000. Mm-hmm. Subscriber jump last month, somewhere like that. So, so you look at those two and you see that it's a certain niche that's keep on, you know, pushing you over. Do you ever look at them and be like, okay, I need to go for a certain type of people or a certain interview to be able to get that reaction? Um, yes, and before no, right? So, shout out to Sean. Sean always shoot me some gems, and sometimes Sean just like, hey man, just put your head down. Interview, get it out. Let the people decide. Don't mm-hmm. focus so much on the numbers because you're going to have high months and you're going to have low months. Right. So it's just ebbs and flows. That's kind of how it happens in this. But he also put me in game like you do have to kind of be a selective and understand what your audience do want to see because you can f- try to force them to watch to something, watch something and it's just not right. going to take. Um, but no. Because um, when you look at your numbers, cause the two that you're talking about is a certain – Demographic, like my page love death. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm seeing. This is like, but it's hard to go to Chicago and I, um, for, I hate it. Like going to Chicago, they got some amazing that's stories, but it's vest and it's, it's so tragic. Like everything, I feel bad for it, and it's almost like it's just normal for them. Mm-hmm. Um, because they go through a lot. They go through a lot, man. And so... But that's dangerous also for you to go down there and do that, isn't it? Oh, no, absolutely. Because you got to know the politics. And shout out again to my assistant at that time. Um, he understood the politics. So you had to understand what side was on what side. Um, and who you interviewing on this day. And making sure this person... Because Chicago ain't talking. If you talking about if on site was a place... Chicago is a place it's on site. So you mess around and have the wrong people there at the wrong time at that the same time. It is a wrap. It ain't no, hey man, chill out. Because nine times out of ten, this person to kill somebody that's close to this person. If it ain't their brother, it ain't no. So you had to know that politic. Yeah. But with you interviewing sometimes ops, mm-hmm. um, because I remember Sean even said, or even we've always said it too, that some it's like you you can't be on both sides. And I know that as media people, like we are, mm-hmm. we feel like we're neutral. We should be able to interview anybody and not feel like I'm with this side or I'm with right. that side. But people don't view it that way. People feel like if you view this, if you interview this person, you're on that side. Gotcha. It, so how does that work going to Chicago and doing that? Uh, I didn't really feel like that at all because most people's stories that I was going to get, I wasn't getting it because of beef. Mm-hmm. Like, so why you say this about this person? Because you know, like I said. I interviewed Mama Duck, which is FBG Duck Mom. I interviewed King Von siblings. We know that both of those were, uh, King Von and Duck were rivals. Right. But it wasn't, my questions wasn't geared to what Mama Duck said this. And Mama Duck, this side said that. It was like more in, so. you weren't initiating more. Because, no, it right. just tell me your story. story. Celebrate their life. Tell me what you've been through at that moment. And so that's kind of my, my approach. My approach ain't really too much to, he said, she said, mm-hmm. what's your response to that? It wasn't like that. So I think walking away, I was able to stay neutral on okay. that part. Definitely cool. 
Well, you know, um, I'm just upset that you caught me. You know what I'm saying? Or that I, that you left me. Yeah, I never caught you, so you just left me. You know, I, my daddy left me. So hey man, at the right. end of the day, when you leave somebody like you did us, man, we trying to figure it out now. You left us. We, in, how they call it? Combobulated or? Hey man, you know what Jay Z said, man? You gotta let your career breathe. Man, I you know I, what I'm I, I respect you, man. I call you a lot of times. You pick up the phone for me. Yeah, Anytime for some crazy going on, you talk sanity back into my mind. A lot of times, you be like, "Say, man." Hey man, and it'd be totally like unbiased ways that you come at it, and yeah. you always you don't never play the favoritism road. So thank you for that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the, for sure. The way you do it, man. Like I said, I know God put you in my life not from this side. That's how I feel. I, and, no I, and I appreciate it. you, man, for uh, always uh, giving us them nuggets, man. Ever since we started, man, I gotta say you been one of the main supporters, man. Uh, you knew this. A a you knew way more about it than us then, and you showing to be scaling now, so I think I made the right decision in rocking with you, and you didn't give me no reason not to, so thank you. Nah, man, I appreciate y'all. You, you helped me out a lot, too, man. Those conversations be mutual, so. Yeah, man. Sure. I, it's just a tough, I, I mean, you can't you, you can't get your feelings. You always tell me that. Like, you can't, you know, you can't take things personal. You know what I it's mean? It's hard sometimes, though. Yeah, but it's then hard. at first, I started off with the positivity, and Lord, have mercy, that changed so fast. Like, yeah. as more, as you build content, people do have opinions. I got a, a, a video just uh, yesterday clipped to me mm -hmm. where I said something a year ago with some people, and they were like, this year was by, con controversial toward yeah, our brand. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, I never thought about it that way. And and people feel a certain way, and they turn it into something a lot of times. But you need that, right? I, I had this revelation the other day, because like you said, you, you come into this wanting to be uh, a, some type of beacon of light, some type of... Like I, I, I'm gonna show that this can happen without having to play in a in a mud, or whatever. Because there's so much negativity out there in the world that you you, you want. But some you need it, and the reason why is like if you think how is energy created? Is created with both a positive and a negative mm -hmm. charge. Wow. If you only have positive, you have no energy. If you only have negative, you have no energy. You need both the positive and the negative charge to create energy to create motion. And when that revelation kind of came to me. I understood that you could talk about the controversial things as well as you can highlight the good things. You need both. Because if you too much of one or the other, you won't create no motion. You won't create no energy. Wow. So hey, I just started, I stopped looking at stuff as so much as right or wrong and just look at it as negative and positive. Okay, this is negative. I don't like it. I'm going to learn from it and I'm going to use it. This is positive. I like it. I ain't going to get too high on it, but I'm going to use it. And that's how that's I how move. go. I got to ask you about the elephant in the room. There you go. There's a big, gigantic uh, yellow elephant mm -hmm. in the room. And it's called the gatekeeper list. And I keep, I'm on this thread where people keep, they talk about this gatekeeper list in Man. a way. And I know that we're blessed today to get it revealed on Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And uh, I'm just happy to uh, be affiliated with the guy who's, who's who pretty much has his fingers all in. He is, hey, man, that guy, Big D the Mogul, man. Hey, for sure, man. Hey, I, I never knew this list was going to become as... Iconic as it's become, uh, man, it's been crazy. Um, definitely the gatekeeper word, of course I didn't create it, but me and uh, Terry Blue, shout out to Terry, uh, Dallas Global, always always saw on everyone from Say Cheese drop a artist list or drop a top producers list or something like that, highlighting those who up front. But I was like, damn, it'd be dope to drop a list to highlight those who people don't know. And the, and the whole goal for it was to give artists a chance to see people who they make and tap into. Um, people always been wondering what's the definition of a gatekeeper. According to this list, a gatekeeper is a person who had a power, the platform, connection, slash influence to help an artist get to the next level. It's not to mean that these people can make or break an artist. The only people that can break an artist is the people. Mm. People gotta like your music. People gotta gravitate to it, but if you able to tap in with these people. These people may have either the access to funds or access to people, whether it's platform or influence connection. Mm -hmm. connection to help you get to the next level. So that's the for people who ask for the definition of gatekeeper list. That's what it is, man. And yeah, man, I got the 2022 gatekeeper list. And how often do you come out with this? Once, Once a, a year. Once a year. Once a year. Every in time March. around in March. Every okay. year. Every year. And and I love it because people are so. 
just shook up by it. I, I, I'm, I love it. And not only your list, but all these lists to be coming out. Yeah. It's always yours because you hold, you don't do but this one. And it's impactful, man. Man, I appreciate it. Even though it'd be a lot of people threatening to drop their own gatekeeper right, list. I was wondering, it how don't many matter. You're the, you the king gate, of it. How many other gatekeeper, gatekeeper lists? Uh-uh. Are there? That's the king. It's only one. Only one. Yeah, me and That's Dallas the king Global. of it. So let, let, let's, let's get to it. All right, so we're we going to start from the it's 17 people on this list. Okay. Why Just, 17 and not 20? Uh, why sixteen? <laughs> <laughs> this is when, you know, go ahead, I mean, man. Last year was I'm like sorry, 13. man. We sorry, man. No, Let's cool. get this thing going. All right, so here we go. We got uh, dark skin the plug. Puts dark skin on here, at number seventeen. He the world star connect. Everybody know pretty much anybody who get on world star go through dark skin. Okay. Number sixteen, new to the well, dark skin is new to the list as well. New to the list, my guy B Hobbs. People don't know B Hobbs. B Hobbs is in charge of like the mm. talent and the platforms at South by Southwest. Dope. So this is somebody in your back corner. You talking about becoming an official artist at South by Southwest. This is a guy you want to tap in and network with, get in your corner. Uh, you got my guy, big homie P out of San Antonio. Uh, you made for it. Show promoter, big guy that does this thing to connect. Uh, Shamar Alice. You know what I'm saying? He's another guy here, big on. He, he I think, little. Um, damn, he just got somebody a deal. And then it comes to my mind, the artist's name. Then it comes to my mind. But also another big show promoter, bring a lot of acts okay. in. Okay. Um, number 13, Lil Zach. Y'all just had him on here. Lil Zach, definitely a gatekeeper, hands heavy into, like like you said, Erica Banks busted. Had a lot to do with that record. He had the Mo 3 Platinum record. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh -huh. Um, Lil Zach, black youngster, he he got his hands in the game. Um, number twelve, I got Kevin from Vertico. You know, Vertico is one of the biggest DJ platforms out here that bring a bunch of DJs together and let artists come there and promote and connect with all the DJs. Core DJ, I, I think I saw Tony Neal there and everything. So, um, number eleven, I know this is a cuss word in y'all store, but I got <laughs> Charleston White on here. Uh, definitely in the last year, whether you hate him or you love him. Charleston White has built a name for himself. We all benefited from his his you know what I'm saying his aura. He's built platform helped build platforms. He's built his own platforms. I see him take other people along with him and make connections. So Charleston on there. Number 10, half pint. You know what I'm saying? Half pint always still hands in the game. Still Erica Banks that came through them. You know what I mean? I know 15 on one got her, but that that's a hub that allows artists to a launch pad, I would like to say. Um, number nine, DJ Bubba, Dirty Glove Bastard. D, you know, Dirt, Bubba, man, everybody, anybody that's anybody that's an artist that come in the city, go straight to Bubba. Can't take nothing away from him. And more than like, more than anything, South by Southwest show was rocking. He had one of the biggest showcases out there. Everybody who was somebody was in that showcase. If they weren't performing, they was just showing up to be there. Um, J Money is on there. I'm gonna speed up a little bit. No, Try no, no, no. Keep going on the tempo. You going? I uh, like this. So, and J Money, I, I'm gonna let Terry kind of he explain that a little bit. He pushed. I'm not gonna say push. J Money definitely decided to be on this list. Definitely a gatekeeper in the game. Um, his influence is heavy. Uh, he's behind a lot of artists getting signed. So he for sure had to be on the list. Of course, Trap Boy Freddie. You know, Dane there, the king of Oak Cliff. He he stepped outside, signed a young lady from Memphis doing this thing. Um, number six, my guy, Smooth Vega. Smooth Vega is probably, that's my superpower. If you ask yeah. me how a majority of my interviews fell in my lap, you know what I'm saying? Smooth Vega, hey, you want this interview from wrestling to whatever. Wow. It's, man, you talking about a guy who works behind the scene, getting shows, booking, in charge of booking some of the most, the major acts that come here. He even called me sometimes like, hey, Def Jam trying to put this artist here. What you think? Should we book the show with this artist? Or Def Jam, we got this mixer here. They want to uh, interview artists. You want to go here? I'm like, yeah. So Vega definitely. is definitely a jewel in his backyard that we want to give our uh, support Flowers to. Too. Flowers too, for sure. Five Bay Bay. No, nothing. Bay Bay been a goat. He connected with everybody in the industry. Anybody that's anybody, you know, Bay Bay, he there. And then I love what he's doing with the hub. Wow. Mm -hmm. That you know what I'm saying? With him and Radio Raheem got going on over there. I think that's a dope look. 
where it brings a lot of people here. I mean, I've seen Ice War Vezel over there. I've seen, um, uh, what's my, um, it's a lot of people come through there. Don't, don't get me tripping. Number four, just said his name, Radio Raheem. Shout out. Radio Raheem definitely is a gatekeeper. Probably should have been on here a long time ago. Um, hands in everything. Definitely a boss. His infrastructure is crazy. The hub, what he does over there. Working with artists like um, Jay Oliver, producer, who got a lot of placements with Rick Ross, Rihanna, etc. Man, Radio Raheem really put batteries in people back and make things happen. Of course, my guy, Rainwater. <laughs> <laughs> Why you say it like that? Rainwater, my guy, man. You know, people, I know a lot of people, again, look at Rainwater as one of those nefarious characters, man. But Rainwater, if you know... You may have to kind of pay attention to why he's doing what he's doing, but if he's going to do whatever he commit himself to, he do it hard, and he do it eff efficiently, and he's going to make sure it get done. Now, you may have to make sure your ends is covered, but Rainwater going to make sure the job get done. He going to make sure he get paid. So, um, But Rainwater, let's look at some of the things he did. You know what I'm saying? He got three artists on. You know what I'm saying? Of course, him. I mean, his connection. Bobby Billions did his thing. The outside song is crazy. But if all that's true, Rainwater had a hand in getting them signed to uh, Empire. Same with Don Don, number seven. Mm -hmm. He's done a great job of turning himself up. Uh, Sauce Walker, you know what I'm saying? So what number are we on right now? Two. two. Number two. Okay. Sauce Walker. Sauce Walker, you know what I'm saying? His whole conglomerate. I mean, I even seen a full of artists that he signed that was from Japan over here to the States, kicking it. The guy energy is unmatched, his reach is unmatched. The way he pour into his artists, his empire he built, you can't can't argue with that. And of course, number one, Tess is the gatekeeper, 2022. Definitely get a flowers to his Carl Crawford. Uh, Texas finally got a, a 15 on uh, a record label that a lot of people can kind of look to that's mainstream. You know what I'm saying? For sure, we put him number one on the list. And I know everybody looking like, what happened to Say Cheese? What happened right. to Jay Prince? And so what we decided to do this year is go ahead and put them in the Gatekeeper Hall of Fame. It's not wow. even fair to keep putting them on the list. Every year. So, so you retire there, them. We retire them. It just what they've done has been unmatched, unprecedented. They've been pioneers. They created a lane that's unmatched. So it's like, hey, it's not even fair to keep throwing the Prince family and Say Cheese into this mix. Let's go ahead and honor them and put them in the gatekeeper hall of fame. So let me ask you. So hold you up, created, hold, hold on, man. A, I got to get that boy okay, a round of applause, man. No, Come so on, you, babe. So you that, created a hall of fame. So I just need to know the, the criteria for this hall of fame. You have to be on the gatekeeper list for how many years? Well, this is only the third year the gatekeeper list. But so I think three years and then you can cross over. I mean, you know, for, for as far as the people, it's not necessarily a criteria per se. But when you, when you try to put Say Cheese and Jay Prince on the list, they just such a so far in the league of their own. It's not even close, Man. and so it's just like uh, that conversation is kind of dead. What, why even put them on there? Mm -hmm. Man, I, I definitely, man. I just, like I said, he just killed it on the interview. Say cheese. Shout out mm -hmm. Sean Cotton, man. That boy there, he supported Boss Talk, came through, man, did a great interview. Probably one of the best ones we've had. Uh, definitely all year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, but I, I mean, he went off and he, he basically, uh, he, um, not show poise too on, on just, just having an all around good attitude and, and just knowing how to move, man, in yeah. the city, man. He talked about different things in the music industry, man, that we wouldn't know if it wasn't for him just explaining some of the things that happened behind the scenes, mm -hmm. man. So you, man, Hey man, I love the gatekeeper list, man. Uh, so what about the apparel, man? I'm looking for my t-shirt, man. You say they coming? Uh, I think so, man. I be worried about doing so much other stuff, man. That you know, I might have to get it over to y'all to get it distributed. Oh my bad. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, do we want to bring someone up to talk about? Oh, the gay oh, list yeah, yeah. Well? yeah. She want to ask so, a question. Do you want a question? We got a question let's, let's, here. You can pull up a chair to this this mic right here. I'll come talk. You got a question? Just a couple. Uh, come on with it. Okay, that, that, yeah, she wanted to ask you a question. She said, like, I got to ask you. Scoot over a little bit so she'll be right beside you. Okay. Okay, you're good right You got there. her on the camera there? Yeah, she on the camera. Okay, yeah, let's, let, 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 let's, let's, April? That would be April Nicole. April Nicole? AKA the plug goddess. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, and 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 you just heard the, the astounding list. Mm -hmm. So what, what, uh, what, what did you? Th I thought it was a great list. To be honest with you, man. Uh, the choices, the people, man. I like I said, uh, I was definitely into it. Hey, get that. Yeah, I'm going and uh, man, that's just just a dope look, man. So, 
April Nicole, what what do you think? Well, first of all, thank you for coming. Thank you, thank okay. you for having me on the mic this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having yeah. me on the mic this time. Um, you know, I think it is an awesome list because mm-hmm. I do I do hear some improvements, oh. and that's super dope. However. I wonder why there's only been one female gatekeeper on the list, and this would be the third year. And when I think about it, because I understand this from a publicist standpoint, mm-hmm. and for people that don't don't know who I am, I am the CEO of Nicole Paradigm LLC and Nicole Paradigm Media. I've been publicist to very um, a lot of different individuals that are on this gatekeepers list, and I also understand that. You know, not trying to have a feminist movement or anything, but mm-hmm. it's a lot of a lot of gatekeepers on this list that really are who they are because of who we are, who we are to them. So there mm-hmm. are so many females in the Dallas Metroplex beyond that can pick up the phone, they get these calls when these artists come in town, mm-hmm. and we are really the ones that are making these things happen. Now, do these gatekeepers say, oh, you know, it's really so-and-so that's really making the moves? Absolutely not. But we're the ones making the moves, and I do want to give a shout-out to Radio Raheem, Mm -hmm. because I am never satisfied now. So, um, and I'm grateful to see that, because as humble as he is, he's not, you know, he's not loud, he's not boisterous, and I'm, I'm grateful to be, you know, representing a brand that's, like, super dope, super humble, and super about... You know, promoting artists, promoting mm-hmm. not just artists. Um, we got Lordy B signed. You know, we have other artists from different genres. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm I'm definitely in a in a great place. But you know, I, I even want to give a shout out to Shamar because Shamar is how I got my start. Mm-hmm. I would not be where I was if it was not for Shamar. Um, he looked at me one day many many years ago, and he was like, "You know, you're a publicist." I'm like, "I'm I'm doing all this writing, but you know, we have a lot of individuals, and the list is really cut. You know, I want I want to I just want I want to ask though, what is do it? What is the issue with the list? Just that it doesn't have females on it. There has not been been much female presence since DJ Duff. I want to give him a chance to speak to that. No, I, I think that's correct. Um, it hasn't been. Uh, I, I've I've done my due diligence. Because I didn't want to put a female on here just for the sake of putting one on here. Right. I want to be able to put a female on here that when you see a Carl Crawford, you see her name and it evens out. Um, I think women in this game is definitely starting to make their head. Like, shout out to DTX Nova. She doing her thing for sure. Mm-hmm. Where I, I definitely considered that. Um, let's see who else. Um, it was a few that we considered, but like the way that we kind of voted, it was just one of those things that like women are hip hop for so long has been male dominated. Women are coming up right now, but right now we just didn't see that person that was that female that was literally on that level. And we tried like, it's a lot of women doing their thing. It's a lot of men that got on this list that got great women behind them. That's no one does anything alone. Right, nobody. It's it's always a team. I would say right now is y'all keep doing y'all thing. I feel like more is coming. Um, so you're it, saying that they need to be more upfront. I think so. It's and that's what guys do. Guys get out there and if you, unfortunately, we in the world. If you ain't seen, you ain't heard. Mm-hmm. If you're not seen, you're not heard, and it's unfair. Because sometimes that means, as long as I'm the loudest, that means I convince people I'm the best. That's not always the case, but that is kind of the game right now. Uh, I try to do my best to, uh, and of course, educate me. Like, who did we miss? Because that's the other great thing about the gatekeeper list is you see these people on the list, but you see the people in the comments that say, hey, but you forgot about this person and it asks that person. And what that does is reveal other people. I was about to say, do you take that into consideration you, you when to. you see that's that? That's how I found about Shamar. Shamar wasn't okay. on the first list. Okay. And I was mm-hmm. in the comments spamming him, spamming him, yeah. spamming him because I know his contribution. I'm I'm all for Dallas. I'm all for Dallas culture. And, you know, I'm not by any means, I'm not even putting myself on the gatekeeper list. Yeah. Because I, I'm really trying to change the narrative, not necessarily speaking about myself. But he said one, DTX Nova. Nova is doing her thing. Like she's for really sure. doing her thing. Um 
And she's probably done more things than you would know about because we have, yeah, you say we got to do our things. We got to be more upfront. We've been doing it. Nicole Paradigm is a 10, I've been in this game 10 years. Mm -hmm. But guess what I had to do as a woman? I had to leave Dallas. I stayed in Dallas. Guess where I had to go get clients? L.A., Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I don't have an OG in Dallas. My OG is in Los Angeles. Shouts out to Freeway Rick Ross. When I make a call, that's who I make a call to. I think about another other people that on that list mm -hmm. when I who I call when people come in town. Mm -hmm. Or if I need to get in contact with Jay Prince, I pick up the phone. I call Larry from Real Hair. That's who I make calls to. I have individuals that I make calls to that I have these relationships with, and a lot of them are not on the list. I don't even know if you consider the real hair Larry. I know he's just now getting into the concert game. But literally, anybody that I want to talk to in the game, mm -hmm. he's, I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling him if I can't reach them. I pick up the phone and I call Shamar if I can't. So let me make them. this clear. Just because you're not on his list does not make you, that doesn't disqualify you or say you're not a gatekeeper. The, I know people have been... Can I use the word traumatized or people have been conditioned that when a list drops like this is the best and this is the only. And so when you see this list, this list isn't coming to say this is the best. This is the the only. But in 2022, this is like, hey, these are the ones we want to be able to recognize and love on and give their roses for the work that they're doing. Sure, it's a lot of other people out there. It doesn't mean that they're not gatekeepers. I just don't want to make a fucking list that's 200 people long. I just kind of feel like the word gatekeeper, you gave the definition, mm -hmm. and you said these are individuals that mm -hmm. artists, um, they're able they to have the power, artists. platform, connection, or influence. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people that have it. A lot of people are they have using it. They don't have to. That's theirs to use or not. So they have the platform, yet they may not be using it, but they qualify as a gatekeeper. What I'm saying is the people on the list are using it. Now, this is what you have to say is this, though, because this is the problem. This is when subjectivity comes into play. I may say they're doing a great job. Your idea of a great job may be they're doing a terrible job. And so I, it's hard for me to say I'm going to create something that's objective that everyone is going to agree with. It's, it's not. It's impossible. Even if me and you sat down and we vetted every person to the T and tried to come up with the most perfect list, somebody's going to tell us this list is bullshit. Because it's subjective of what help is. When somebody's like, oh, they're not helping. But then you're like, how do you help? And then I hear your definition of help. I hear this artist's definition of help. Everybody got different ideas of what help is. And so, therefore, on this list, it's just like, hey, to not be on this list is not to say you don't qualify. And on this right now, it's just like, let's give a chance to give these people their roses while they're here for what they're doing. Anybody else that's not on this list, drop the comments of who should be on this list. Still love on these people because what people are going to do is then try to discredit these people so that these people down here can fit. Mm -hmm. That's getting added. You don't have to do that. It's enough room for everyone. Wow. Because the goal of the list is that for artists to know what's in their backyards. So if even when you see this list, you don't see who you rock with on this list. I don't know everybody. Texas is what, the second largest state mm -hmm. in the country? How the fuck I'm going to know everybody? It's impossible. That's it is why it's impossible. important for them to, wow. to put in but the, the comments. List, and that's why the list is important because it creates a dialogue that you and I are having. Don't. What about this person? What about this person? If there's no list, then people just float. Right. Like it, like it. Yeah. Love it. Love the answer. Um, April Nicole, man, I, I, I hope that, uh, uh, hey, man, uh, I hope Big D the Mogul uh, gave you the answers that you needed. Um, uh, I mean, uh, definitely the list is going to be coming out annually. and uh, uh, Every year. Every year, and, and it's gonna go down, man. Just like this every time, and I love the, I love the, 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 the friction and the, 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 the way that it brings. You need the negative and the positive. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Wearing this, <laughs> like, energy. wow. You know, I wasn't negative though. No, no, no. no, no he's talking negative. about. He I'm talking about objective. No, what, what I mean by negative is this. You gotta have both. That's all he's saying. Negative, yeah. not about bad and wrong. It's just about you need the both sides to create in a, a narrative, and the narrative is energy. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And that's it. That's all wow. I'm saying. I do want to say this. 
I do want to commend you because by you starting these li- this list, there have been many other lists created by bloggers. Mm-hmm. You know, um, shouts out to Real Tune, shouts out to you know Dallas Easy Global, TV, yeah, Dallas all Global, yep. all of the guys. Chill, that chill, are chill, chill, no pill, 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 during the pandemic, mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. It's a great thing. Um, a lot of them capitalized off of death, you know, but it's a narrative. It's mm-hmm. a narrative. I don't have any negative thing to say about that. But what I do have to say is that I'm April Nicole. I'm a Dallas native. I've been in this game for a while. I am definitely going to be the forefront of pushing the feminine narrative in 2022 Dope. because, and I love our men. I love black men. I'm definitely not a basher. I'm definitely not a feminist, but what I am here for is to make sure that we get our flowers. We, it has been a long time. We have supported a lot and we could, you know, we could go um, and a lot of these women that I've been speaking with. Yeah. We could go in the direction of like a super head and do a tell all book. Mm. We don't want to do that. All we are saying is, when when people roll in town, our, our phones ring too. For sure, dope, dope. You know, for sure. we also making sure artists are taken care of down to. Uh, they need IV strips. They need d- diabetics. Stri- we we do a lot for sure, and we're not runners. A lot of us are bosses because I'm definitely a boss, not a worker, but a boss. I'm a servant as well. But what I do is I take care of everyone that's attached to me and I make sure that the individuals that are my clients that I'm working with, whomever they bring in town, they are going to be taken care of. And that's one of the reasons they want to continue. Um, they want to start a relationship. All right. But I want to, I just want to, I want everyone to know April Nicole, those that don't know me, y'all should, but I have been in the background. On some occasions, definitely. But I'm definitely gonna be in the forefront. I'm definitely gonna be. Pushing. You coming for the list? The, not, you know, I like him. I ain't no, I'm saying you you coming to be really on the list. Appreciate it. That's what I'm saying. You I coming. appreciate his effort. I would never down what he's doing. Um, it's not it's not about my opinion on the list. Shouts out! I'm I'm really excited that Radio Raheem is on the list because I was getting ready to you know. Bring <laughs> out, bring out. Is that what this is all about? Absolutely not. Okay. Because like I said, there's so many people on that list that I've worked with. You know what I'm saying? All three of the lists. I just want I just want Dallas to understand we need a culture, and that culture is going to be built on male energy and female energy and togetherness. We have artists. We have a list. How many of these lists, how many of these individuals have a signed artist? Shouts out to Shamar. He got Suji Cash signed with Kodak Black. I'm, and, I, and I'm not getting ready to shout everybody out. Yeah. But we're talking about gatekeepers, and I want to see these uh-huh. these next lists with these artists. Who's signing them? Who's getting them deals? We need a record label in Dallas. We got to come together. Okay. It's time. Man, thank you so much, man. Thank you for we having appreciate me. appreciate you. Did you want to say something before she left? The, just I to get out of here. I, 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 no, I, I, I still got to talk to you some more. Okay. Before. I just want to say this. Um, the gatekeeper, listen, to my opinion, it ain't about just breaking the artist. Because the only per- only people that can break the artist is the fans. I don't care if you get signed to Kodak Black. I don't care if you sign to Drake. If the people won't gravitate to the music, it doesn't matter who you attach yourself to. And so when you look at these gatekeepers, don't go to them as far as them breaking you as an artist. Approach the gatekeepers. Understand what their superpower is. Uh, And use that to your leverage to get you in front of more people because it is the people who break the artist. Man. That's it. Thank you so much, man, Big D. Thank you, April Nicole. Thank, thank you, you so for much. Your, I, we wanted a questionnaire because the, the gatekeeper list is hot. That's and I ain't going to lie. <laughs> I, 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 I love it. I, and when it dropped, it's coming out. So it's going to really be crazy. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to set this up. I thank God for you guys, man. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much. I'm going to finish it. up. Man, thank you so much. You, you coming back, right? I, you know what we we, got, we got something real serious we better be get fine. into be we need him on it really cause he don't he, you know he oh, you gotta take my number down oh, no. we get I, 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 yeah yeah she will but but yeah yeah. This, this, what me and her gonna do you would I would love you it would really be crazy I might but. wear a ski mask <laughs> <laughs> you better uh, thank you so much thank you alright oh man so that was great um now what me and you gonna talk about now we gonna get back into this interview about just 
being uh, a, one of the guys, man, who who started out like you did in the business, man. Uh-huh. Do you feel like you know you you do you feel like you were you supposed to be in this time and moment in 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 work in the work that you put in? Uh, I, I feel like yeah. I mean, I can't be nowhere else but in this moment. So I've learned to just enjoy the moment and make the best of this moment. You know what I'm saying? It's like. You know the you know as the Bible it's still the Bible say some Here great stuff. Here we go, yeah, you know yeah, saying? yeah. Get in now. You know, yesterday is gone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, can't worry about yesterday is gone, and tomorrow got enough problems of his own. So, or is it? I said that wrong. Uh, I just worry about today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I am where I'm supposed to be, um, and my goal is just to be better today than I was yesterday. Dope, and dope. that's how I move. So, so man, what? Give us the insight on the big interview that's coming, man. We, I know, you know, I know you you had some issues where your cameras came a little bit uh, up missing. <laughs> you know, shout out to my nigga New York man. Hey, you know what I'm saying? If you got, hey. I'm over here. If you got them, if you got it, man. Bring it to me, baby. Hey, hey I'm buying everything hot off the streets. Hey, yeah. man, shout out to man. That's wild. <laughs> Hey, one day y'all gonna get that story that I ended up in the crack house man, in South Dallas at two in the morning. He told me, man, that's a dope story, man. man. Looking for a crackhead named New York and he <laughs> stole my cameras in my truck. Um, but damn, no, I, I forgot what was the question. <laughs> no, I was just talking about it, man. But thank you, man. No. Uh, man, if it's anything uh, that did we leave anything out? I mean, we turned no, everything over. It, man. You gave a great interview as always, man. I'm gonna say, man, I'm gonna be messing with you at all times when it come down to when this. Like I said, this is coming out on the same day. Yeah, we. I, I'm gonna be ready and I'm gonna be locked and loaded, baby. It's gonna be wild, man. Gatekeeper list 2022, man. The coldest list ever. I'm hey, telling man. You. Thank you so much for coming on Boss Talk 101. Hey, Boss Talk, where the bosses talk. Peace out. Hey, yeah. man.